Hi, I'm Catherine and welcome to the Department of Physics at Oxford University. Now, my piece of advice for you today, don't judge a book by its cover. What I have here is, well, it's pretty underwhelming really. It's a small piece of black ceramic. It's not very nice, it doesn't look very special. You wouldn't really give it a second glance, uh, but it does this. This unassuming piece of black ceramic is in fact a superconductor, and that means it's perfect at conducting electricity. Most materials, when you pass an electric current through them, heat up. Some of the electrical energy is lost to the material. Resistance tells you how hard it is to push electricity through the material. Lots of resistance means lots of energy lost, means lots of heating. A superconductor, though, gets its name from the fact that it has no resistance. If you put electricity into a superconductor, there will be no energy lost. That's what's special about a superconductor. As well as having interesting electric properties, superconductors have interesting magnetic properties. Now, in physics, electricity and magnetism are really two sides of the same coin. So perhaps it's no great surprise that something that is weird electrically is also a bit weird magnetically. This piece of superconductor is floating here over a set of magnets. Now, superconductors really don't like to be near magnets, so they push themselves away by generating their own bit of magnetism and making it match the magnets that are already there. If you have two magnets, a north pole and a south pole will attract, but two north poles, or equally two south poles, will repel. Now, if we put our superconductor near a south pole, then the superconductor can in effect create a south pole for itself, which then causes the superconductor to repel the magnet and the two get pushed apart. Now, if we had no gravity, the superconductor would push itself completely away from the magnets. However, the magnetic repulsion is pushing the superconductor upwards, but gravity is pulling it downwards. So it ends up balanced, and it sits floating above the set of magnets. You probably will have noticed, though, that I had to do something to my little piece of black ceramic in order to get it to do that. I had to cool it down, and I had to cool it down a lot. And to do that, I used some of this. This is liquid nitrogen, and it's cold. I mean, it's really, really cold. Outside today, it's probably about 10 degrees C. Your fridge at home will be something like 4 degrees C. Your freezer is probably at about minus 20. The average temperature of Antarctica in winter is about minus 60. The coldest temperature recorded outside on Earth ever is minus 90. And this stuff is a full 100 degrees colder than that. Nitrogen becomes a liquid at minus 196 degrees C. And that's how cold we had to get our superconductor to make it show these amazing properties. So we had a superconductor floating above magnets, but we can also turn it around and have a magnet above a superconductor. Again, we're cooling the superconductor down, this time in a little bath of liquid nitrogen. And if I put this little cube magnet on it, the superconductor will produce a magnetic field that pushes the magnet away. But gravity pulls the magnet down, so it stays hovering where it is. But what has this all got to do with crystals? Well, that's a fair question, and it's not obvious. But in fact, this piece of black ceramic is made up of lots of tiny, tiny crystals. And it's all of these individual crystals acting together that make the material a superconductor. Superconductivity is probably one of the strangest and most exciting properties of certain crystals. It's particularly exciting because actually we're still doing research into it. There's still a lot left to learn about superconductors.